the new sheriff in town. And if you really want to be followers of Christ, you need to do as the Jews do and obey all 613 laws of Moses. Uh, okay. Makes sense to me. But the marshal said the old law can't save us. Yeah, but he ain't here. Wait, who's that over there? It's the marshal. Paul, <laughs> you're too late. This here is my town now. If y'all think I'll stand aside and let you preach a false gospel to these good people, then you'd be mighty wrong. Oh boy, looks like we've got ourselves a bona fide shootout. Er, right out. Who's gonna win? Paul has been busy. As a wandering marshal, or missionary, he's traveled from region to region, preaching the gospel and helping the young church to grow. But he can't be everywhere at once, and sometimes trouble comes to town as soon as he leaves. After Paul starts the church in the Gentile region of Galatia, the Judaizers swoop in and begin twisting Paul's teachings, and the Galatians are a-listening to these folks. Now, what is a Judaizer? Well, if you remember, they're Jews who had converted to Christianity, but just aren't ready to let go of their old laws and traditions, and loudly insist that all Christians should also accept all 613 laws. So Paul is doing some damage control. If the law could save us, then why did Jesus die for us? Hmm? Now, of course, we still need to obey the two great commandments, the Ten Commandments, the teachings of Jesus, and so on. But when Paul talks about the law in his letters, he's usually talking about the 613 laws of Moses, which point to Christ but don't have the power to save. But if the law of Moses can't save us, why was it given in the first place? To answer that question, let's head on over to the schoolhouse. Paul now explains that the law of Moses was only meant to be like a schoolmaster. After leaving Egypt, the former slaves and spiritually young Israelites were terrified to go up to the mountain of the Lord and receive the higher law. So God mercifully gave them the Mosaic law to prepare them for Christ's higher law that would come later. Remember how so many things in the Old Testament are symbols of Jesus? Yeah. Unfortunately, though, over time, many Israelite students became so focused on their schoolwork that they forgot why they were in class in the first place, and the law became their God, leaving them unable to recognize Jesus as the true and living God. Folks, it's time to graduate to follow Jesus. When true faith is come, we no longer need the old schoolmaster. Oh, but the Galatians aren't the only ones struggling with this same idea of leaving their traditions. Paul writes about a recent get-together in Antioch with the Apostle Peter, Paul's mission buddy Barnabas, and both Jewish and Gentile Christian converts. Now, in Jewish law, Jews and Gentiles eating together is forbidden. But that isn't a problem anymore, right? And at first, everyone's having a great time together until some Judaizers show up and suddenly Peter has to leave. Should I go and offend these guys or stay and offend these guys? Hmm. Ah, uh, I have to go. Ooh, ah, uh, we'll um, catch you later, guys. Okay. At two, Barnabas. <gasps> Oof, that's awkward. Now, we don't exactly know what Peter was thinking at this moment, or if there's more to the story. But Paul does call him out. Peter, you're a Jew, but you don't follow the customs anymore. We're supposed to be one big happy family following Jesus. Oh. The Mosaic Law may have once been a helpful teaching tool, but now it's only causing division in the church. Okay, this may seem a bit silly today. I mean, why were these people so attached to their rules and traditions? 
Well, there are a lot of ways we're all different, and it's so easy to let our differences drive us to disrespect each other. Or join a team, and suddenly there's contention. Is there really a them and an us? No, we're just God's little kids. Let's just try to get along and do some good. Now, the marshal's message in Galatians started out pretty stern. Repent or else! Ah, how are you deceived so quickly? But he wraps up all warm and fuzzy with a message about scrum diddlyumptious fruit. Not kiwis, apples, and avocados. Yes, that's a fruit. <laughs> and pretty gross. But the best kind. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Ah, oh, have you ever tasted, uh, experienced these? Mm. Yes, these are fruits of the Spirit working in our lives. Now, some people question if they've ever had a spiritual experience or if the Spirit is guiding them. Well, if you're trying to live the commandments and you felt one of these things or you've seen one of these results, then yes, the Spirit of God is at work in your life. Sure, rules and traditions can be helpful in training us to be more like Jesus. But when they become our focus, we might need Marshall Paul to remind us of what's most important. Yes, it's Jesus whom we follow. And we enjoy the fruits of the Holy Ghost who changes us as we love God and others in our awesome spiritual journey back to Him. Almost 50 years ago, Living Scriptures was founded to help everyone better understand and feel the power of God's Word. Who knew that today's Line Upon Line series would touch half a million lives every week? Season 4, The Glorious New Testament, is in production, and you are invited to help us in this great cause by clicking the donation link below. And as our gift to you, anyone donating $10 per month also receives a Living Scriptures streaming subscription. For a donation of $1,000 or more, our artists will give your likeness a cameo in one of our videos. Together, through the gospel of Jesus Christ, we can make a lasting impact on countless people around the world. From all of us, thank you. And now, go read the scriptures for yourself.